how to set up your controller with DJ Pro. I'm DJ Spiegelspin and I'm going to show you how. So although DJ Pro is one of the best DJ apps for the iPad in terms of the functionality with just using the iPad and the touchscreen, it makes your DJ set a lot more professional and fun when you use DJ controllers. So there are a couple of different types of DJ controllers and these different types of controllers are going to be plugged in and set up a little bit differently. So I'm going to go over all of them from Bluetooth controllers to self-powered controllers and then to the traditional powered controllers. So the first one I am going to start with is one of my favorite DJ controllers and this is the Newmark iDJ to go to touch. I believe for the price and for a beginning for a beginner's controller or a spare controller for anyone who uses the app, I believe that this is a great controller for you and there'll be a link down below to get it at the cheapest price. So, let's just open it up. First thing is we got the case. I recommend whatever controllers you decide to use, just get the case for it because it's not very expensive and not only does it protect your controller from getting bent or having the knobs messed up, but if you get the right one, it'll have pockets in it so that you could have everything you need to DJ with the controller in the case so that all you have to do when you're ready to DJ, ready to go do a gig, is you grab your case and you go. So here we go, we got the Newmark iDJ to go to touch. Just put that down over here. We have a USB-C power adapter. The new iPads use USB-C connection. So you're gonna need a way to plug in the regular USB cord that comes with the controller in the box. You're gonna need to be able to have an adapter so you could plug it into the iPad. I, I was really, really stressed out when I got a brand new controller and I thought I would be able to plug everything in from the box, but then I had to go run out and go get an adapter just to use it. So keep that in mind when you are purchasing a new controller and you're getting excited when it's gonna be delivered soon, just make sure you'll be able to plug it in. All right, so the adapter, this is very important. I talk about it in almost all my videos. Make sure you get one with multiple USBs and make sure there's a way to charge the iPad because if your iPad dies, then, you know, DJing over. The next one is HDMI, so you could add a screen if you wish to with video mixing. All right, so in the box for this control for this controller, it came with one of these. Now this is a USB cable. So on on one side it looks like this. This is where you plug it in to the controller. So we're gonna plug it in right here to the controller. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the iPad and we're gonna realize that this doesn't actually plug into the iPad. You would need an adapter. So we're gonna use the adapter. And now look at the screen. As soon as we plug in the controller, now the controller is working. So that is it. For this type of self-powered controller, that's all you have to do is plug in the USB with the adapter into the iPad and you're ready to go. It's the easiest setup in the world. And then there are this isn't the only controller like that. There are uh, many controllers by Hercules and there's a lot of other controllers that are just powered this way through the iPad. Just keep in mind that this is gonna drain the battery uh, a little bit quicker because there are these lights and this thing is getting all the power from your actual iPad. So keep that in mind, that's why you should get an adapter where you could charge the iPad, because now you could have your iPad charging while it's powering that, and if you have a high quality charger, it will charge your iPad a little bit more than it is draining the battery so that your iPad won't die. If you get a cheaper charger or a charger that doesn't charge as much, then it would still show up that it's charging the iPad, but you will be using a little bit more power than you are putting back in. So it will last longer, but eventually it will die. Next thing I have in this case is an audio cable. This controller specifically has one of these, which is like a regular aux cable that you would use in a car or something. And you just plug this side into here where it says the main output 
and then you plug the other side into your speaker. This controller is me meant to be used with like Bluetooth speakers or like a tailgate party speaker or stuff like that. That's why it doesn't come with the RCA connections like, like most other controllers come with. And in the box to this con controller, it came with a low quality one. I recommend getting a more high quality one. Uh, next thing I keep in here is just some earbuds. Usually when I use this controller, it's not the most, it's not the loudest uh, venue and I don't need over the ear headphones. So if I forget my over the ear headphones or if I just don't feel like bringing that much stuff, I can just use these earbuds, ear, earbuds and we're good to go. The controller is plugged in with headphones. But now let's go to our settings inside DJ Pro because with the version four update, they have added a new section called audio device setups. So let's go to settings, and the first one is audio device setups. So if you want to just practice and not plug your controller into speakers, then you could do out pack, out, output to iPad speakers. So you could practice DJing. You could practice DJing with the controller and just use the speakers on your iPad so you don't have to set up speakers. And that's a good way to practice. Just remember that your iPad isn't gonna nearly have as much bass as uh, another professional speaker setup. So you m might be practicing the wrong way because you'll be doing mixes and you won't hear that you have too much bass. And then when you have an actual sound system, you won't be able to balance the bass correctly. So just keep that in mind. That was a mistake that I made when I first started using controllers. Next, in the audio device setup, main output, channel one and two. So that is this output that says main. So that means that the main output is going to go out of here. But you could change that. You could do three and four, apply, and then this, and then you could change the booth monitor. You could, you could set one and two for pre-queuing. If you're not going to use headphones, you could press none. And then you could do the booth output over here. Like let's say if it's a party with two different rooms that you want to have speakers to, you could use this setting and then you could have a booth output, but you lose a headphone output. Also a booth output is if you're using really loud speakers pointing towards the crowd, you could have a speaker face in you so you could hear the beats and balance the beats better. So you could customize it a little bit, but you are limited to the output and input ports that come on your controller. And this one doesn't have that many. All right, so if you are using a controller that isn't self-powered, the difference is you're gonna have a wire like this. So this is gonna plug into the controller and then, you're, and then you take one of these with the USB and you plug it in and then this powers the controller and then you'd use the same wire that you would use to charge your iPad. And then that would go into the, into the slot and the slot should say iOS. And then it's going to charge the controller is going to be powered through an outlet. And then your iPad is going to be charged through the controller. So you don't have to worry about your iPad dying. The next type of controller is Bluetooth controllers. I don't really recommend these because it makes it dip more difficult to use headphones. But there is a trick to it. When I first wanted to try one of these Bluetooth controllers, I went to the music store and I wanted to, to demo one of the controllers. And I think it was the Pioneer DDJ200. And then I went to my regular Bluetooth settings and I went to look for the controller in my settings and I couldn't even see it. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is nonsense. I'm not using this controller. And I ended up not buying it. But what I didn't know is if you press the middle button here, go to settings, and then go to MIDI devices and then press Bluetooth MIDI devices. And then if your controller, if your Bluetooth controller is on, you join within the app through the Bluetooth MIDI devices settings. You do not use the regular Bluetooth settings on the iPad. And then once you're in this area, you can press the device that you're using and you can map anything on the controller. So if you have an old controller that doesn't have every button that you want, you can, add, you can get rid of buttons that you don't use and then make them do what you want. I made multiple videos on how to map the controller, so I'm not getting too far into it. And then also up here, you could save ones. So you could make a 
a mapping on your controller for hip hop and then you can make a different mapping with different effects and stuff for EDM and then it's like having two controllers for the price of one. Just remember that that every time you map these controllers it does take up memory on your iPad and you don't want to run out of memory because then you're going to run into other issues with your iPad. Alright, so if this video helped you guys learn something, give the video a like. And then also, if you like learning about DJing with the iPad and everything that you could do with DJ Pro, subscribe to my channel. I make these videos all the time. Thank you.